Hello everyone and welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you'll enjoy this legal education content, and today will be the day I earn that subscription. For today's story, we are dealing with a new reality, that bees are fish. Let's just not spoil the lead, let's just start with an article from the Sacramento Bee, which seemed like the best name source possible for this story. Bees are legally fish in California. Court rules. Here's why and what led to it. Don't worry, friends. We're not going to rely just merely on the article. We are going to read portions of the court decision that says Sacramento bee and Sacramento fish would be the same thing. Fun. Here is a picture of a fish. Great. Bees are now legally considered fish in California under the state's endangered species law, an appellate court in Sacramento ruled Tuesday. The 1970 Act expressly protects fish, which were initially defined as invertebrates, in part. And because the Act protects snails and other invertebrates that lived on the land, Tuesday's ruling said the legislation also includes bees, which are also fish. Accordingly, terrestrial invertebrates, that would be the invertebrates living on the land, like each of the four bumblebee species, may be listed as endangered or threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. The Third District Court of Appeals Associate Justice Ronald Robbie wrote for the court. In short, the ruling protects bumblebees, which were initially classified as endangered by the California Fish, or should it be California Bee and Game Commission. The bee movie now re renamed the fish movie. Bees are fish. I mean, you know, coming out of California, bees and fish, man, they're just the same thing. Yeah. Okay. The most recent court case. Okay, we're going to skip that part because it's a spoiler for the lawsuit. Farming groups initially petitioned against the term invertebrates as limited only to aquatic invertebrates in order to exclude bumblebees as a threatened species. The farmers, a certain kind of farmer too, which just makes it extra rich. This decision allows the state of California to protect bumblebees and other imperiled species of insect, as well as other types of terrestrial invertebrates, as fish. The term invertebrate includes all animals without backbone, which make up the vast majority of life on Earth and possibly the vast majority of life in the California court system. Jespin said that insects form the backbone of ecosystems, and humans in particular depend on bees or fish, either way, for pollinization. Under the act, bumblebees will be taken, will be protected from take, which can include any activities that cause them to go extinct. Essentially, it protects colonies of these bumblebee species from being killed intentionally, or accidentally, or through any other reason. So, this is from the Sacramento Bee, but that is just, of course, the highlight to give us the amuse-bouche for the more full-fat treatment that you're expecting here on Uncivil Law, because we're not just happy to do the headlines. Oh, no, no, no. Wherever possible, we like to go to the primary source material. Let us go to the primary source material. Let us go to the primary source material in the Court of Appeal. In the state of California, in the third appellate district, Sacramento, the Almond Alliance of California versus the Fish and Game Commission with interveners, the Xerxes Society for Invertebrate, Invertebrate Conservation. This is a great case name, man. The Almond Alliance versus the Fish and Game Commission with assistance from the Xerxes Society. This is an actual case that actually happened in actual California. 
fun. Okay. Uh, I have highlighted some portions of the case. Uh, I think I need to reopen it. Hold on. Hold on. I'll talk amongst yourselves. If I lost all my highlights, I'm going to be a very, very sad panda indeed. Because I went through and highlighted it for you. Okay. Oof. Oof. Okay. Didn't lose my highlights. All right. All right. There I Highlighted copy. All right. <clears throat> the California Endangered Species Act directs the Fish and Game Commission to establish a list of endangered species and a list of threatened species. The issue presented here is whether the bumblebee, a terrestrial invertebrate, falls within the definition of fish, as that term has been used in the definitions of the endangered species law. I mean, why not from California? Why not, ma'am? Let's have a discussion about whether or not bumblebees are a kind of fish. In California, apparently anything is possible. Anything is possible. Okay, so now let's go through the definition of fish in the relevant law. Prior to 1969, the relevant law defined fish as wildlife fish, mollusks, or crustaceans, including any part, spawn, or ova thereof. In 1969, the legislature amended the law to add invertebrates and amphibia to the definition of fish. But one would presume fish-like invertebrates, interpreting things in context, right? Usually when you have a list of things, you interpret the things as part of the list of things. It's normally how you do a statutory construction, right? When you, you're trying to interpret everything in the list as part of the same genre, seems like interpreting it as a B might be a problem, but let's press on. When Senate Bill 858 was moving through the legislature, the Department and Natural Resources Agency submitted an enrolled bill report in support of the bill, stating the expanded definition of fish will permit closer control and monitoring of harvest of species such as starfish, sea urchins, sponges, and worms. And the commission will be authorized to make regulations deemed necessary for proper protection and management of these species. The Department of Finance stated, by expanding the definition of fish as proposed, it will be possible for the commission to regulate the taking, which is to say, in this case, anything that would lead to their death, of amphibians, invertebrates, such as the starfish, sea urchins, ammonites, jellyfish, and sponges. But at least we're still in the sea, and sea adjacent. Okay. California has been at the forefront of enacting legislation to protect endangered and rare animals. The 1970 Endangered and Rare Animal Legislation provided no person in the state shall take, possess, or sell within the state any bird, mammal, fish, amphibia, or reptile, or any part or pride thereof the commission deems to be endangered or rare. So, yeah, I mean, initially, like, Okay, but still not so much with the insects, one would notice. Uh, the Assembly Bill was amended twice in 1984. The first amendment is immaterial to this pill, bill appeal. Invertebrates were still expressly included within the definition of endangered or threatened species. Uh, addressing this version of the bill, the Department of Natural Resources submitted an analysis saying the bill would change the designation categories of endangered and rare to endangered and threatened and extend provisions to act to plants. Plants may also be fish. Also by adding the term invertebrates in the definitions of endangered and threatened species, the bill would reaffirm the commission's authority to include groups of invertebrates among animals that may be designated as endangered. Okay, 
As to the regarding invertebrates, the Department of Natural Resources continued, the 1970 legislation defined species as birds, mammals, fish, reptiles, and amphibians. Although technically, which is normally how we do law, I guess, these term names only refer to vertebrate classes of animals. It was the department's understanding of the legislative intent. The 1970 legislation was extended to include invertebrates as well. So even though the legislature only used the vertebrates, also the invertebrates, California takes a much different view to statutory interpretation than your humble uncivil law. This is not how uncivil law does the jurisprudence. Apparently how the Court of Appeals in California does the jurisprudence though, so, okay. It was not believed necessary to include the term invertebrate in the original legislation because fish includes the invertebrates. Uh, okay. So everything is a vertebrate, except it's also the invertebrates. Uh, okay. I mean, this seems like strange statutory construction from the Department of Natural Resources in 1970. But I mean, I guess it goes to show that the uh, strange and novel interpretations of law and words is nothing new. So when Amber Heard, who I would like to remind everyone is a California resident, said that pledge and donate are the same thing. Well, maybe she was right after all. Maybe, maybe she was right after all. I mean, uh -uh. Okay. In the act, the legislature found and declared that certain species of fish, wildlife, and plants have been rendered extinct as a consequence of man's activity, that other species of fish, wildlife, and plants are endangered or threatened with extinction because their habitats are threatened with destruction, adverse modification, or severe curtailment or because of overexploitation, disease, predation, or other factors, and that these species are of ecological, educational, historical, recreational, aesthetic, economic, and scientific value to the people of California, and the conservation, preservation, enhancement of them and their habitat is of statewide concern. Okay, carrying on. In 1998, the Attorney General published an opinion in response to a request from an assembly member in pertinent part addressing whether insects are eligible for listing under the act. So, you know, one, we didn't read insects as part of that list, one would remind you. So, in 1998, the Attorney General wonders, hey, how about the insects? Okay, so the Attorney General says, these definitions limit the applicability of the act to birds, mammals, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and plants. Insects do not fall within any of these categories. Hey, the Attorney General of California is trying to use words. Nice, way, way to go. Try, you're trying with the words, you're trying. In zoological terms, insects comprise the insectia class of the phylum anthropod. Since they are not within the governing definitions, they're not eligible for listing as endangered species. Hey, the, the attorney general, looking at, you know, the words on the page, says, you know, hey, insects are not one of those things on the list. They're not one of the things on the list. It lists, you know, the fish and the reptiles and the, the you know, the birds. Not so much with the insects, so no. You can't put the insects on the endangered species list, people, because, you know, that isn't what the legislature wrote. Oh, silly Attorney General of California, looking at the text California legislature passed. That's not how you're supposed to do law in California. The sole assertion in this appeal is that the commission had no statutory authority to designate four bumblebee species as species under the law. So the the commission um, said, 
Well, the 1998 opinion of the Attorney General is interesting and everything, but it's current year now, so we think bees. Okay. So the sole assertion is the commission has no authority to designate the bees because bumblebees cannot fall within the definitions of the species in the list, which, you know, didn't include the insects. But the commission in 2020 says, how about the bees? Okay. In resolving the question of statutory interpretation, our fundamental task is to ascertain the intent of the legislature so as to affect the purpose of the statute. We generally give words their usual and ordinary meaning. Well, that's good news because, you know, if we're going to give words their ordinary, usual meaning, then, you know, that doesn't mention the insects, it does mention fish. So probably we should stop, you know, writing things. But we're, we're only on page 18 of 35 uh, at this point. We have more things to write. Uh, okay. Um, fine. Skip, 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 skip. Petitioners assert if the relevant law applies to the, the sections, the term invertebrate should be read only to be inadequate I apologize, aquatic invertebrates, thereby excluding terrestrial insects, since the First District Court of Appeals concluded the act does not protect insect species such as butterflies. The department has taken the position the act does not protect insects. The Office of Administrative Law in 1980 determined butterflies could not be listed because of the that the United States Fish and Wildlife Service stated insects are not covered. The legislature again confirmed that insects cannot be listed. The legislature said that. The department and the department's finance and roll bill was amended to include invertebrates, include the term, was added within the definition of fish to protect aquatic life, which, you know, makes logical sense. Application of the Noscor Asatis canon requires a restrictive reading as the term invertebrate and applying to aquatic species only. That's like you determine something by the company they keep kind of idea. Including terrestrial insects in the definition would lead to absurd results. So here are eight different reasons why we shouldn't read the term fish to include the, the bees. Um, you know, the legislature said no. Uh, the department has said no. The United States government says no. The Office of Administrative Law said no. The First District Court of Appeals said no. And, you know, basic principles of statutory construction say no. These are just a few of the eight reasons that we shouldn't understand the term fish to include bees. But not a problem for us. We, we think the fish includes, we think the bees and fish are long lost cousins. They are one and the same, man. Okay. We certainly agree the relevant law is ambiguous as where the legislature intended for the definition of fish to apply to purely aquatic species. Let's try that again. We agree the law is ambiguous as to whether the legislature intended for the definition of fish to apply to purely aquatic species. We are not clear about this. We, um, we're not sure if fish are purely aquatic. Okay. Okay. A fish, as the term is commonly understood in everyday parlance, of course, lives in aquatic environments. Yeah. As the department and the commission note, however, the technical definition includes mollusks, invertebrates, amphibians, and crustaceans, all of which encompass terrestrial and aquatic species. Uh, 
Okay. Moreover, by virtue of the express language in the law, the Trinity Bristol snail, a terrestrial moloch and invertebrate, is a thran species and could have qualified only as such within the definition of fish. Snails, snails are also fish. I mean, they're more fish than bees, I guess. So you got that going for you, I, 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 I suppose. Um, uh, okay. Uh, all right. We conclude a liberal interpretation. Well, no one doubted that for one second. Tell me this is a troll suit. Oh, rogue. I wish I could tell you this is a troll suit. Oh, rogue. I wish I could tell you this is a troll suit. This isn't a troll suit. This is an opinion. This is a decision from the Court of Appeals in Sacramento. This is, this is law now. We conclude a liberal interpretation of the act supported by the legislative history and express language that a terrestrial moloch and invertebrate is a threatened species. Express language we cannot ignore is that the fish defined in law is a term of art, not only limited to aquatic species. Accordingly, a terrestrial invertebrate like each of the four bumblebell species may be listed as endangered or threatened species under the act within the confines of fish. Yeah. And those are all the words I chose to highlight in this 35 page opinion because I figured it was all the words we we really needed to cover. I am I have trimmed the opinion down to its essence. I have trimmed the opinion down to its essence. Bees are fish. So Ember Heard, this one's for you. My dog stepped on a fish. <sighs> okay. That was good times. That was fun. <laughs> that was... There's always the uh, there's always the California Supreme Court. Okay. Uh, Super Mario Subpoena is a member for seven months. Thank you for hitting that join button. Super Mario Subpoena, twenty dollars. Sometimes you gotta fish. Some days you gotta be. And Jackie Joe gave ten dollars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Kripe says, I'm a beekeeper. I'll distribute this link to this video at the next meeting of our bee club. Otherwise, no one will believe me. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have, as it turns out, uh, beekeeper, you have some very interesting news to share with your fellow beekeepers. <laughs> you have some very interesting news to share. It turns out bees are fish. You are all fishermen now. I I don't know whether or not this means you need a fishing license or not. Uh, the opinion doesn't seem to go into that territory, but uh, you may want to apply for a fishing license just in case because you now raise fish vis-a-vis -vis the bees. So... Yeah. Why are bees fish now? California. That's really the short answer. Why are bees fish? 
California. Yeah. So what should we... You know, uh, Stephanie, this is also good news for Stephanie, uh, incidentally, because <laughs> this is also good news for Stephanie, because Stephanie's employer um, is big time into the fish. So uh, Stephanie, uh, as it turns out, you have some news to share with your workers tomorrow. Um, you now have to get them the bee outfit in the white with the netting and stuff and the uh, the smoke out of the can. You have to tell that you have to tell your company. You have to tell your company they're in the bee business now. This this should this should go real well. This should go this should go real well when you're talking to uh, the foreign office that's associated with your company as you do from time to time. And when you have that international call and you have to tell them, by the way, as it turns out, we're into bees now. That should go over super well. Super, super well. <sighs> so, go back and read chat. Let's read some chat. Let's read some chat. Why didn't they just pass a bee preservation bill by vote? Man, that's just too easy. What gender is the bee? Fish. A bee stepped on my fish? Could be. Bees are actually tiny stingrays? Could be. Bees with freaking laser blames on their head? Yeah. Since bees are now classified as fish, what is honey classified as? Do I now have to go to the fish market to buy honey? I mean, I guess. Go to the fish market and say you want some honey. See how well that goes. Sugar, sugar, uh, 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 oh, honey, honey, uh, 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 you are my fish be plants. Yeah, I, I don't know that. What about flying fish? Well, all fish are flying now because they're bees. Have I ever tried honey barbecue on a fish? Well, that's just fish paste now on fish. I, I don't know about that. Snails are nasty. This is definitely real, Randy. I didn't fake 35 pages of judicial opinion. I am not that creative. I am not that creative. Hey, that's a super generous super chat. CA human, do you mean California human? Man, leave immediately. I wanna thank you for all your work on this trial. I've learned a lot about the law, the courtroom and proceedings. And as it happens, you're learning a lot about California where bees are fish too. Mista says, my husband and I are also beekeepers. Can't wait to discuss this in our group either. All the beekeepers out there, man, you have something fun for your group. You have something fun for your group. And when they don't believe me, when they don't believe you, just direct them to this, this video. Bees are fish.
So an apiary is now a hatchery. I could be. To be or not to be a fish, that is the question. We need more stupid, there's so much stupid. There's so much stupid. Should we do a Johnny Depp stupid? Let's do a Johnny Depp stupid. I've got so much Johnny Depp stupid. I've got an infinite amount of Johnny Depp stupid. Let's read a Johnny Depp stupid. Okay. Let's try this one. Let's try this one for the Johnny Depp stupid. Okay. Amber Heard verdict sends a message to black women everywhere. How did black women get involved in this? If the mistreatment of a wealthy, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white actress is ridiculed by the world, what does that mean for black women? Wow. Wow. Apparently, Amber Heard is also Rachel Dolezal. Who knew? Tiger Cop says, I have 20 days left in California. I think I'll get my fishing pole and go catch a bee. Yeah, I'm not sure how uh, black women got into this, but apparently the black women have been sent a message vis-a-vis -vis the wealthy, blonde hair, blue-eyed, white actress. So, uh, okay. This is uh, definitely from the root. This is very from the root, yeah. On Wednesday, a jury in Virginia decided that actor Johnny Depp had been defamed by ex-wife Amber Heard and her 2018 op-ed published by the Washington Post. Depp was awarded $15 million in compensation and punitive damages, but could only legally recover up to $10.35 million. Well, at least they got that much right, so that's nice. Heard did win one claim in this case and received $2 million. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence... Eh. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband, Heard said in a statement shortly after the verdict was announced. <laughs> I'm even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. It is a setback. It sets back the clock to a time where a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously, she elaborated. If the mistreatment of a wealthy, blonde-haired, blue-eyed white actress is ridiculed by the world, what does it mean for the black women? Wow. Wow. For six weeks, Heard testified how Depp not only sexually abused her, but also physically assaulted her throughout their relationship. She claimed that she headbutted her, that he headbutted her, as well as punched her and dragged her around by the hair. Heard maintains that everything she wrote in the op-ed, entitled, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath that has to change, was true. Depp denied all allegations of abuse. Well, only if we only had some kind of mechanism to determine which one of them was telling the truth. Too bad no such mechanism exists. <laughs> For capital B black women who do not have whiteness or fame or money to protect them, Heard's words of the, first of all, 
some black women do have fame and money. So are they no longer black? I mean, by the way this is written, I mean, presumably, because four black women who do not have whiteness or fame or money, but what if they have fame or money? Are they no longer black? I'm so confused. For black women who do not have whiteness or fame or money to protect them, Heard's words of the verdict set a ring, set a setback ring especially true. Whether you believe her or not, I, I don't even care what follows next. I feel like whether you believe her or not is kind of an important detail. The way the world treated Heard was downright cruel and uncalled for. Really? Why? Not only were her bruises placed under a microscope by forensic experts during the trial, social media joined in on the skepticism. Yeah, because we can also see the things. Yeah. Heard was tuned in. Okay. Heard was turned in everything from memes to murals, mocking the validity of her abuse because it never happened. Some believe Depp when he said, that she was the aggressor in the relationship. Some, yes. If all of Heard's privilege could not protect her from such viciousness, black women, like always, remain even more vulnerable. Well, maybe that should lead you to the conclusion that she doesn't have privilege. I mean, that would be a conclusion you could draw. I thought the privilege was supposed to make you immune. So maybe she doesn't have privilege at all. Maybe her entire thesis sucks. As we've seen from Tina Turner to Rihanna to Megan the Stallion to the dozens of black women R. Kelly abused, our pain becomes punchlines and our humanity is invalidated. What happened to her is another vile reminder to women particularly black women, that nothing can guarantee our safety. Well, that was a lot of pile of stupid. That was some pile of stupid there. I hope you enjoyed that particular version of the stupid. <coughs> I think we all know the point she's trying to make. No, no, uh, no. No, I, no, 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 no. Why was that stupid? If I have to explain it to you, if I have to explain it to you, you know? I believe in you. I believe you can figure it out for yourself. Teach a man to be, he will live forever. <laughs> oh, Dr. Spiegel wrote an article in Newsweek. Oh, I look forward to that, ma'am. That should be fun. Fish be yourself. Can we turn amber into a bet and into a verb? I ambered the bed. Did I see the update to the article that included Alita? I did. Joe says, has the stream made you dumber? Yes, they all do. Should Johnny Depp file an appeal? Amber Heard's going to, so he should cross appeal. I think he can win. I wouldn't guarantee it, but I feel pretty good about it, all things considered. Well, my friends, we have been we've been streaming for 40 minutes, and I think that's good. That's a good little legal bites from uncivil law. And I think we can uh, end the stream for now. Uh, we're going to probably do a streamathon after the bar exam. I think that'll be fun. And uh, also, uh, feel free to send your suggestions as always to 
unsolvablewallyt at gmail.com. If you're going to say I'm a misogynist, you know, you can just ignore that um, because I I will. Uh, Because, you know, I'm making fun of liars, uh, whether they're women or not. You know, it's all good. I'm going to sign off for now, man. It's been fun. Until later, my friends, I hope all's well. Cheers and goodbye.